Good boy. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. I recently got something very, very cool in the mail and I'm going to open it on camera with you guys. All right, so it's that time of year where we are getting inundated with seed catalogs and all of the different beautiful seed displays at our farm stores. Sometimes it's really hard to decide what companies to go with. And for me personally, sometimes I just go with whatever is easiest available to me. So I will pick up some fairy morse seeds from the farm store. But in general, I like to buy seeds that are, some, that are supporting small business. And I actually had a small business seed company that's based out of the US come into my inbox recently and offer me a really great deal that I want to pass on to you guys. So there's a total of 35 seeds in here, 35 packets of seeds. And this deal works out to 90 cents a packet for heirloom seeds. So without further ado, let's open the Homesteaders pack from So Right Seeds. I did get a peek at what was going to be coming to me and I have grown a few of these varieties before. I'm really excited to have a few more of the seeds. There's actually quite a few varieties that I have never tried before that I'm eager to put in this year's garden. Ooh, look at them all. <laughs> I'm dropping them. <laughs> so I've loosely organized things here in really no particular order, but um, I think I'm gonna start with the seeds that are frost tolerant varieties. So reminder that all of these are open pollinated heirloom seeds and you can save the seed from all of these different varieties and get the same kind of produce out of it as the parent plant. Super valuable. So these seed packets being 90 cents each and then being able to be saved you just really can't beat it. So first things first, we have Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. I have grown this many, many times before. It's a really great spinach variety that has a nice big leaf and is frost tolerant. Butter Crunch Lettuce, such a classic. There are lots of seeds in here. It doesn't say how many, but it's a couple hundred. Lettuce seeds are really small. There's a lot in there. Yellow Spanish Onion, a classic variety right there. Swiss Rainbow Chard. Now this is something that I haven't started for this year, but I grew a lot of chard last year. And this kind of green does really well through the cold and the heat. So I think I'm gonna start some of this soon. Sugar Snap Peas. I did just start a whole bunch of peas in the garden, but they're a different type of pea. They're a shelling pea. And Sugar Snap Peas, just they have their own deliciousness to them. So I think I'm gonna start some of these soon too. Cherry Bell Radish. I actually am a little bit low on my radish seed, so I'm really excited that this has come. A lot of people don't like the flavor of radishes. They find them to be too peppery. If you ferment them, it really takes a lot of that pepperiness away. And if you roast them, the same thing happens. And it's actually kind of like a low carb version of a potato at that point. So if you've never roasted a radish, I encourage you to grow them. They're a really quick turnaround, right about 28 days until harvest from seed. So they're really worth growing. And you can eat the seed pods too. Maybe I'll show you guys that a little bit later on in the season. Utah celery. So this is a variety that I've never tried and I'm very intrigued. When I've grown celery in the past, I think I've made the mistake of growing them when it's too cold out. A lot of plants will bolt or go to seed, a lot of frost tolerant plants, when it's too hot out. Celery will actually bolt as a response to the cold. So I'm gonna start these a little bit later. And like most seed packets, there's a lot of really helpful information on the back. And this one says that celery needs light to germinate. And I don't know if I knew that. Very valuable information. And this is awesome. I have never grown asparagus from seed. I've always bought the crowns. My sister-in-law has done asparagus from seed. And so now I've got some seeds and I can try it. Waltham 29 broccoli. This is the broccoli that I have growing in the garden right now and I did run out of seed. So this is awesome too. Red Acre Cabbage. I have grown this cabbage variety in the past and it does really well even in our super hot early summers. Snowball Cauliflower. I don't know if I've tried this variety yet, but I think I might try this going into fall. Cilantro. If you didn't know cilantro is a frost tolerant herb, now you know it. I actually have some of it volunteering in the garden, which is super cool. And you can actually eat the seed. The seed is a pretty well known spice called coriander and the plants readily go to seed. So once you have this one pack of cilantro, you're gonna have cilantro seeds forever. Purple top turnip, what a lovely buttery classic here. I grew these a couple years ago and had a really great result. 
bull's blood beets. So when I've grown beets here on my farm, I have grown them for the greens. I've never really been a fan of the roots, but these look like huge hardy roots. And both of these varieties of carrots I have never tried. We have the Scarlet Nance carrot and the Imperator 58. This seed pack is packed with seed. Carrot seed is really small and there's a ton in here. Okay, moving on to the stuff that needs warmth to grow and I'm gonna go about these in no particular order. First is a very classic basil variety, Genovese basil. I actually have some of this growing inside my house right now. It's another small seed and there's a bunch of them in there. And there's two different tomato varieties that come as part of the homesteading collection. And believe it or not, I have neither one of these in my collection <laughs> until now. So I think I actually am gonna put both of these in my lineup for the spring and summer garden, beefsteak tomato and aroma tomato. Roma type tomatoes are really great for sauces and beefsteaks. Beefsteaks are good for tomato sandwiches. Also a couple of different varieties of pepper. Both of these I have grown before. Jalapenos we grew ton of last year and I've grown the California Wonder Green Peppers. They do ripen to red like this and they did really awesome here in the greenhouse last season. Small sugar pumpkin. I've never grown this variety before. We don't usually have a super great luck with, with squash varieties around here because of the squash bugs and the squash vine borers, but I just may try this this year. On the back, I was wondering if this was technically a pie pumpkin, and it is. It says, this standard pie pumpkin is also popular as a decoration. Pumpkins are small and round with evenly ribbed orange skin. Flesh is fine grained and sweet, perfect for baking. There's two different flower varieties in here. Really great varieties that the pollinators absolutely love, especially bumblebees and hummingbirds in my experience. I'll be growing lots and lots of zinnia this year, so I'm excited to have a variety pack like this. And marigolds are a really great companion plant flower. They can help repel certain pests in the garden. I am gonna grow corn this year. I have, I think it's peaches and cream corn from another seed company, but this is a bantam sweet corn, a different variety, and I think I'm gonna grow these as well. As far as I know, corn, different corn varieties need to be grown a certain distance apart. I need to do a little bit of research, but this says this open pollinated heirloom produces two or more ears of sweet golden corn per stalk. Each ear has eight rows of golden kernels with a tender and sweet old-fashioned flavor. And this is also the year of the cucumber for us here, and here is a variety that I do not currently have in my collection. The Bait Alpha Cucumber it says it's excellent slicing cucumber with a thin green burpless skin and uniform shape. Best if picked eight inches or smaller, heavy yielder 65 days to maturity. That's really fast. That seems like a real good one. Black Beauty Eggplant. I can't say that I'm a huge eggplant fan, but maybe I just don't know how to cook it. So if you have suggestions on how to cook eggplant, I wouldn't mind adding this into the garden this year. This is super cool. This is something I don't have in my collection. I don't think I've ever seen a round zucchini. It says this adorable round zucchini is perfect for stuffing or as a soup bowl. Grows as a compact bush, harvest when fruit reaches three to four inches in diameter. That's really cool. I'll probably have to add that to the garden. This is a squash variety that has done well here, despite our squash bug and squash vine borer situation. A Waltham butternut squash. It says prolific vines produce several butternut squashes that reach four to six pounds and nine to 10 inches long. Fruits store exceptionally well and feature cylindrical necks with small seed cavities and sweet orange flesh. This looks like a type of cantaloupe, Hallie's Best Melon. I have several different cantaloupe varieties in my collection, but I do not have this one until now. And this is a watermelon variety that I don't have until now. Crimson Sweet Watermelon. I think the kids are really gonna enjoy growing this one. It says this classic watermelon is high in lycopene and bursting with flavor. Fruits are 20 to 25 pounds each with light striped skin, vivid crimson flesh, and small black seeds resistant to Anthracanose and Fusarium wilt, AAS winner. I don't think we've ever grown huge watermelons here, and this might have to be the year. I usually will grow, I think the biggest watermelon that we've grown are either the golden watermelons, which are about this big, or sugar babies, which are, they sound like they're supposed to be small, but our sugar babies were actually pretty big. But not 20 to 25 pounds big, that's massive. <laughs> This arugula should have been in with the frost tolerant stuff and I missed it, but it says plant early in spring and keep moist for tasty tender leaves. Avoid hot weather as plants will bolt quickly. 
ready for harvest in six to eight weeks. So I need to get this planted soon. I really like the flavor of arugula and I've never grown it. Contender bush bean. So I thought I had purchased some of this from somewhere and it's not in my collection. I don't know where it is. So I'm really happy to see this variety as part of the Homesteaders collection. I've never grown this before, but I know Kevin and Sarah at Living Traditions Homestead, this is their go-to green bean. So I'm really excited to try it this year. Look at me adding stuff to the garden already. <laughs> it's not even planting season, not quite. These are really cool looking. I've never grown lima beans. Jackson Wonder lima beans are highly prolific and dependable lima bean with speckled red seeds that dry to a speckled purple brown. This butter bean grows on 18 inch bushes that do not require staking and are easy to harvest. This versatile lima bean is both cold hardy and heat and drought tolerant. Cold hardy, I wonder how cold hardy. I gotta look that up. That's pretty neat. Huh. And they threw in a microgreens variety, which I just recently got into microgreens. Those of you who have been around the channel a little while know that I do grow sprouts in a jar inside my house over really all times of the year, but mostly during the winter months. And the sprouts have been doing really well, but there's just something different about a microgreen. Microgreens are just grown a little bit to a little bit larger. They get their first set of true leaves before you harvest them. And they're a great addition to salads. I did notice when I was perusing their website that they sell whole microgreens kits and different growing kits for different seeds. And I thought that was super cool. It's a super easy way to start out if you're completely new to gardening. What gets me the most though, is the true value that is in the price of these seeds. So if you were to buy each seed packet individually, they run from about three to four dollars each and that can add up when you really want a wide variety or you need a wide variety of seeds to start out your seed collection or to start gardening. These guys have put together a couple different collections and in these collections the seeds wind up to be about a dollar a packet and then you add on the coupon code that I'm going to list right here and you get 10% off plus free shipping and it works out to 90 cents a packet which is really hard to beat i don't know if it's beatable maybe like me you're not necessarily interested in like the beets or maybe you're not really interested in the microgreens it doesn't really matter because there's so much value in the collection as a whole all you really need is to be interested in about 10 different varieties and the rest of the varieties, the other 25 are essentially free. So if there are some seeds in certain collections that maybe you're not interested in growing, you can always give them away. Not only can I see the value that's in these seed packs right here, but they're an American owned company, my small family business, and they do everything here in the USA. They grow the seeds in the USA, they do their marketing through the USA, and they even print their seed packs in the USA. So I'm really honored that they came into my inbox and asked me to show off their seed packs. I'm really excited not only to show off to their seeds, but also to grow these seeds. I know that there's a whole lot of value here in my hands and it's only going to increase when I put these seeds in the ground.